Hello and welcome to the Futurist 3D video training series. My name is Jeff Christiana and in this video number 11A of the Scheme Forge 47 video series on how to use fill. In this video we'll be talking about the diaphragm and the extra shells. So in Scheme Forge under craft fill you have activate fill checked. <clears throat> you make sure that is checked. Your diaphragm what this will do is we're going to change this is the default settings here zero is turn this off to turn it on you put any other value other than zero so so this is going to say and I'm using this as an example here so I'm going to go ahead and put a three in here and then I'm going to turn this on let's say one so what's going to happen is your first layer is solid and then it's going to say every one, two, three layers, you're going to have one layer of solid. So that makes that one solid, then it goes back one, two, three, and then you have a solid layer. So if you have an object where you want it to be stronger and have more support, you can toggle this to where it doesn't honeycomb 100% all the way through the object. You just do it every other. So normal default settings is 100 and 0 which basically turns that off and that's where I leave it and depending on what you're doing you may want to enable that now we'll talk about extra shells extra shells are added to your object if you have an object with thin walls and you want them thin um, you want to put zeros in each one of these you just want to turn these off. But if you have an object that prints in, it's a bit flimsy, you want to turn on the extra shells. So what I use is a 211. I can also use a 132 and a 232. And you can experiment with these as you print your object. If you get strange results, you know, try again. What I like with this is that my extra shells on base gives me one extra so it's going to do the param it's going to do its perimeter this is your perimeter right here these circles and then you're going to say you want one extra shell so it's going to come in here and it's going to do one extra shell it's not going to change your object dimension it's going to do this on the inside so if this is three inches you add your extra shell it will still be three inches so it adds it to the inside to make your walls more beefy. You can put four or five in there and you'll have one, two, three, four, five. You can go crazy with you know, the number increasing your outer perimeter uh, thickness. But it doesn't, won't change your object. But what I like about, get rid of those there. What I like about this setting is that you've got your outside parameter. We're going to do an extra let's just say this is your extra here so your outside outside and then here's your inside your infill and then you're gonna go up here to extra shells on alternating solid layers these are solid layers solid layers are layers that are honeycombed or a solid infill at the first so you're gonna be putting two so that's one two infill one two now the next layer it says alternating so the next layer you're going to do one infill one next layer one two infill one two and what this is doing is it is making your object water tight let's say you're making a glass let's say this is a glass you fill this with water this is going to be watertight if you set these to zeros you're only going to get a line up here, a, a, a wall, a wall, and then your infill. And if the water can sneak its way through that, it'll find a way. So this will definitely help um, with your object. And then extra shells on sparse layers. Sparse layers are non-solid areas. So let's say the top of your cup, this is your base, that is set to one. So this will only turn on once you get up. So you can set this number to three. So once it gets up here, there's no infill. It's going to do one, two, three. So you're effectively increasing that wall on the inside 
of that object. So you're affecting your inside for that. And sometimes, depending on the object, you know, you just have to, to play around with that setting. So that only takes effect <clears throat> on layers that don't have any infill. All right, we're gonna wrap up this video. We'll see you in four or in eleven B. We're gonna be talking about grid in infill.